Welcome back class, my name is Mr. Betts and this is Meme Street in which we examine an important historical event using the internet's greatest resource, meme videos and other funny clips. Today's topic, the Lincoln assassination. Now this is an awkward video to make because it involves the murder of Abraham Lincoln, debatably our best and most beloved president and something not to be made fun of. That's why I'm going to focus on his assassin, John Wilkes Booth and his crazy conspiracy because I'll make fun of that guy all day. It's April of 1865, General Lee has just surrendered at Appomattox Courthouse and the Civil War is over. Everybody should be happy, right? Cha-cha, real smooth. Well, no, John Wilkes Booth is furious. He hates Lincoln, loves the Confederate cause, and vows revenge. And after personally hearing Lincoln say that he'd favor suffrage for African-American men, he can't take it anymore. What kind of garbage is that? Oops, my anarchy symbol. Oh, by the way, John Wilkes Booth is like a super famous actor. Everybody knows him. People flock to see him. Do we have any footage of him? You are tearing me apart, Lisa! He's known for his roles in Shakespearean plays. Of course, his favorite role being Brutus in Julius Caesar. Some say that he is the most handsome man in America. But for my money, Edwin Booth, his famous acting sibling, was much better looking. Daisy! Hi! Oh god. <laughs> now previously, Booth had assembled a crew of David Harold, George Atzerodt, Lewis Powell, and John Surratt with the intention of kidnapping Lincoln and releasing him in exchange for Confederate prisoners. Uh, the group would meet and plan at the boarding house of John's mother, Mary Surratt, which I guess is nice to see a mother and child bonding. <laughs> They had even previously tried to kidnap Lincoln when they heard that he was going to a production of the show Still Waters Run Deep, but Lincoln was a no-show. He actually went to a ceremony at the National Hotel, the same hotel that John Wilkes Booth was living in. Lincoln had no idea, but he totally deked them out. Expose him! Expose him! <laughs> But Lincoln had a sense that something was up. Just three days before the assassination, he had this dream where he was wandering around the White House. Everybody was all in mourning, and a soldier told him, the president, he's been killed by an assassin. Freaky. And interesting, too, because most of the time when people tell you about their dreams, it sounds like this. Have you ever had a dream that, that you, um, you had your... You you could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything. So on April 14th, 1865, Booth goes to Ford's Theater to pick up his mail, only to find out that Lincoln and General Ulysses S. Grant will be attending that night's performance of Our American Cousin. And Booth is like. <laughs> He quickly assembles his crew and tells them his new plan. He will kill Lincoln and Grant. Lewis Powell will be sent to kill Secretary of State William H. Seward. George Atzerodt will kill Vice President Andrew Johnson. And David Harold will help them all escape DC. It's a perfect plan. How could it fail? See, the idea was that by taking out these four specific men, it would throw the North into chaos and give the Confederate government a chance to reorganize. Well, first, you're not gonna have four. You're gonna have three because Grant decided not to go to the show. And George Atzerodt, um, he was having second thoughts. He was in for kidnapping, but not for murder. But Booth managed to convince him to go along. Three, four, five, six, seven. Patricia! Get it together, sweetie. We have a show this weekend. And it should be no surprise that Atzerodt luckily lost his nerve. Didn't even try to kill Vice President Johnson. Actually got drunk at the hotel where Johnson was staying. This part of the plan was a failure. <laughs> Lewis Powell was all in though. See, Secretary of State Seward had recently been in a carriage accident and he was bedridden. So Seward, posing as a delivery man, said that he had some medicine. He made it inside the Seward residence, but when challenged by Seward's adult son, Frederick, Powell went into beast mode. <laughs> He 
He pistol whipped Frederick, burst into Seward's room, stabbed up the army medic that was attending Seward, and then slashed at Seward's face. The only thing that saved Seward was this large metal splint that was put on his face on account of the accident. Now, thinking Seward dead, which he wasn't, actually everybody survives this attack, he stabs two more people on his way out and runs into the street to find that David Harold has left him. Now, Powell doesn't know DC, but still, he mounts his horse and casually rides away as if nothing Nothing has happened. And now to the balcony at Ford's Theater, where Lincoln is watching the show with his wife, Mary Todd, and their guest, Major Henry Rathbone, and his girlfriend. Now, Lincoln had a policeman assigned to him, but that policeman went off at intermission to a tavern. The irony is that that very day, Lincoln had signed the authorization to create the Secret Service, yet still, this was his level of protection. Just gonna check and see if the house is safe before I go to bed. Hey, are there any stabbers down there? No, it's okay. Okay, good. Booth casually walks the backstage hallways, usually off limits, but this is John Wilkes Booth. If he wants to walk the balcony hallways, he can. If he wants to hang out backstage, he can. <laughs> Booth slides into Lincoln's darkened balcony and blocks the door. Knowing the play well, he waits for the biggest laugh to strike, and when it's delivered, he shoots Lincoln in the back of the head, a wound from which the president will die from two days later. And no, I'm not going to cut to a funny clip here, because this truly is one of the saddest moments in our nation's history. But I will cut to a funny clip when Booth jumps the 12 feet down off the balcony and busts his leg in the process. Free your mind. Though some historians say that he actually hurt his leg when his getaway horse fell on top of him. Either way, he's fleeing and injured, but not before shouting, Seek Semper Tyrannus, meaning thus always to tyrants. Again, there's some disagreement on what he said. Some say he said, The South is avenged, or I have done it. Either way, he screamed something. All of the sounds that are trapped in your mind. But escape is difficult. He's injured, highly recognizable, and the most wanted man in the entire country. There's a $100,000 bounty out for him, some of it offered by his own brother Edwin. It takes him and David Harold 10 days to get to Port Royal, Virginia. Two days after that, Union forces corner them in a barn. Harold surrenders, but Booth refuses to come out, despite the fact that they're threatening to burn the barn down. If there's one thing in this house I know how to do, it's how to cook, all right? What are you making, fire over there? Which the soldiers eventually do, and Booth is shot trying to escape out the back. He dies from this. Uh, all the co-conspirators are arrested. Four are hanged, four are sent to prison, though three of them are pardoned by President Andrew Johnson. These are people like Dr. Samuel Mudd, who attended to Booth's fractured leg and said that he just kind of fell into the situation. Tomara que a Julia seja muito feliz com a escolha dela. But the damage was done. Lincoln, who had spent almost his entire administration in the greatest conflict that our country had ever known, was gone. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions, gathered along the rail lines that brought his body back to its home in Springfield, Illinois. And the nation's mourning can be best expressed in the heartbreaking poem by Walt Whitman, O Captain, My Captain. O Captain, My Captain. O Captain, My Captain. So that's the meme story of John Wilkes Booth and the Lincoln assassination. Hopefully 150 odd years is a long enough time to let us laugh a little while we learn. So give me a like if you did either of those two. And if you really want to learn about the assassination and the search for Booth that ensued, check out Manhunt, the 12 day chase for Lincoln's killer by James L. Swanson. It is fantastic. It reads like a Hollywood action thriller, but it actually happened. And you can check it out using my affiliate link in the description. So with Lincoln, Dad, that means that we're halfway through the curriculum, but make sure you subscribe because we have a long way to go. We're gonna get through it together. Be safe, and I'll see you next time.